And Dondan has got the biggest storage of gold. Yet they don't have a single smallest mine of gold. Their economy is based on our minerals. And if we safeguard our minerals and protect them and say out of these minerals, we are producing a currency that is going to compete internationally. We stand a good chance. We need African Central Bank. We need African Monetary Zone. We need African military combat. Because these pockets of wars that are happening in Africa are not of our own making. They are sponsored wars so that those who continue to steal our resources can do so uninterrupted as we fight ourselves, amongst ourselves. So we need a military, a common defense system, the African High Command that will ensure the stability and security of Africa. We equally need a binding African court to deal with dictators who only exist in Africa to feed their friends and families. I was not brought by a plane here. I was not brought by a car here. I was driven by the spirits of those people who were dumped in the oceans. And when they were dumping them in the oceans, their cries are still crying loud till today. They did not dump them in the ocean only. They dumped them chained on their hands and their feet and they could not fight. They, when the sharks were f eating them in those oceans, they could not fight. Even if you know that today I'm going to die. But it is always good to die fighting. That you must hold the shark even when you know it's going to swallow me. I must, I must die fighting. Those people who died in the ocean said to me, you ought to arrive there. For because what you guys are going to start there is that which is going to seek reparations for us. As you leave this place and going back to your home, remember the people who died in the plantation, beaten, treated like dogs. Remember all of those slaves that asked for help and they never found help. But you must say to them in spirit, the help has, has arrived. And that help we declare today that will fight the battles of the heroes and heroines of Mau Mau, of Bambata Rebellion, of the slaves. This Pan-Africanist Institute must be at the center of demanding reparations for all the suffering Africans have gone through because of colonialism. We must teach our people that we are not beggars. When we ask for reparation, we are not asking for donation. We are asking for what was stolen from us to be returned so that we can prosper and become a better nation. I don't know if President William Ruto means it because he said so many things and I can't locate him these days because the things he said during election and the things he's doing now are two different things. I don't know. Because I heard him saying we need to do away with the dollar and build our own currency but his actions are not speaking to anything of doing away with the dollar. The latest being putting a red carpet for a murderer. A person who killed the Kenyan people coming into this country, receiving a red carpet and being saluted by our own army. This is not a Kenyan army. It's not a colonialist army. The Kenyan army is a product of the Mau Mau rebellion. Those people must be prosecuted the African way because ISIS is not meant to fight any crime. It's meant to pursue 
political fight. That's why ISIS will not declare a warrant of arrest against Netanyahu, but can declare a warrant of arrest against Putin, who has not bombed a hospital, who has not bombed a refugee camp, who has not declared a war on a certain ethnic group. And we families. as revolutionary economic emancipation movement must be also associated with, the, the with what way. Guinness because President ISIS Seko Torah said not in 1963, he said, above all, we must avoid the pitfalls of tribalism. Will not there is tribalism taking place in DRC. All our leaders our have taken a platform to support or to be against this one or that one. They've spoken on Palestine. They've spoken on the war between Russia and Ukraine. But I've, I'm still to hear the stand of President William Ruto about the ongoing war that is not covered by anyone in DRC where people are fighting over territorial expansion and plunder of resources and blacks are killing other black people and we pretend that, like, that we don't see. It's important as leaders of states and governments to always condemn violence and war, especially if it's barbaric and informed by tribalism and unjustifiable territorial expansions. Before you can speak about other countries, charity begins at home. Let there be peace in DRC. Without peace in DRC, Kenya will never know peace. Because these rascals are going to learn from those wars in DRC and want to import them into Kenya. You have a duty to stop them there before they come into Kenya. Comrades, we will make sure we the struggle of all immigrants, most of whom are economic migrants and asylum seekers in South Africa. We will never. In South Africa, they say to us, if you want to be elected, you must declare war on illegal immigrants. And illegal immigrants, they mean Africans. We have refused as the EFF that we will never declare war on, on any immigrant, illegal or legal, illegal according to whose law. Because if you are illegal, you should have violated a certain law. Which African law did these people violate when they came to this side of Africa? Because they are still in the same territory of Africa. They are at home when they are in South Africa. We wish to tell them we're going to elections next year in South Africa. We wish to reiterate that and we tell them all the time. If they want to elect us on the basis of xenophobia, they can keep their votes. We are not disparate for votes. We are disparate for the unity of Africa. And that's what we want to achieve in our lifetime. Remove the visas as an immediate step. And I heard Kenya is going to do that by December. Perhaps I must come back here in December unannounced. So to test if indeed President William Root means exactly what he said. When he said there won't be visas in December. Maybe I must sneak in and test without applying for any visa and just give them the South African passport and say I'm coming home. <laughs> Mama, we want to commit in front of you and all the dignitaries who are here and the students that this Pan-African Institute will be supported by the EFF we will ensure that indeed it has got a home in South Africa. We will not only support it verbally, we will put money into it, we will pay the staff members of the institute, we will also pay the offices of the institute because we believe that 
we must speak one language as Africa. We will donate the books here at the university to ensure that every African writer has got his or her book in the Pan-Africanist Institute. Let's all spread the gospel. Indeed, it was not a mistake to launch it here in the rural areas because no one must be left behind. If you can carry on your back the rural communities, you have no any other option to go anywhere except to go to the urban. But if you start from rural, there is no way you can cover the urban. But if you start from the urban, you are going to be reluctant to come to the rural. We are starting here to liberate our people in the rural areas and we are going to the urban to ensure that everybody hears the message. Tell President Ruto that the people of Palestine are what Mau Mau was. Tell President Ruto that the people of South Africa are what Palestinian people are today. Where our land that get encroached, where our land just get taken, and we get killed on our own land, we get tortured on our own land, we get imprisoned on our own land. When we fight, they say we are terrorists. This Nelson Mandela you celebrate for 27 years, he was in prison because he was a terrorist. What crime did he commit which the Palestinians are not committing? His crime was to fight for the liberation of the people of South Africa and the oppressed world all over, including the people of Palestine. It can be correct that President Ruto, knowing the history of this country and the history of South Africa, comes and tells us that is with Israelites. Our war is not on Jewish people. Our war is not on pregnant women, Jewish pregnant women. Our war is not on Jewish children. Our war is against a Zionist apartheid state of Israel. And that's what we are fighting. So if you got money from some Jewish person, we are not fighting that funder of his we are fighting the state of Israel. We are not fighting individuals. We are fighting the state of Israel. At the age of nine years, the Boers walked into my house and turned everything upside down, stripped my mother naked. When I see what those children of Palestine are going through, I can immediately relate that this is what apartheid looks like. We cannot be pan-Africanist if we can't associate with the oppressed nation. Our pan-Africanism is based on the basis that we are an oppressed nation ourselves. And everywhere else where we see an oppressed person, that person is our sister, that person is our mother, that person is our father, because we are not free until the whole world is free from imperialism and colonialism. I don't know if you'll regret inviting me after this. But my problem is that I tell my truth as is. And I say it to authorities without fear or favor. Till today, no one has ever sued me legally successful. Till today, no one has imprisoned me because you can't imprison or sue the truth. The truth will always prevail. <laughs> Comrades, we must make sure that as we live here, our sympathy is with the oppressed people. Look at Cuba. Its crime was to choose a different economic system to what America has chosen. And then they are under more than 60 years of economic embargo. What did crime did the people of Western Sahara commit against Morocco? We are at the center of speaking the truth as a Pan-Africanist Institute because 
we've got the ear of the continent and the diaspora and the whole world and this organization we are launching today prof will live forever and ever because you only speak the truth yourself to power and you always make us politicians to want to check if indeed we are still on the right track so an institution established by a person like you we are guaranteed that it will live for long and it will live for generations to come that's why we are proud to be here so it is very important that we really appreciate the fact that africa must work towards developing itself and the only partner who will bring us true development is china and russia because they do not come to africa with strings attached they are coming with an intention of ensuring that africa is empowered our population is allowed to grow they are not giving us their doctrines for instance if people were supporting same sex marriages you remember that it is a western idea that is highly rampant in the united states but they are coming to africa and telling us that we must adopt that culture and we must create laws that support these kind of people that is like imposing your new ideology on other people it is like neo colonization is continuing so i don't know what you think about this engagement but i believe china is not a threat in africa and the only thing that is a threat is if we have corrupt leaders going to these other partners international partners and taking poor deals for their people that lead to default and lead to deprivation of effective services for african people tell me what you think down in the comment section if you're watching us for the first time please don't forget to subscribe to our channel like this video and also share thank you and may the good lord bless you goodbye